Welcome back to Outdoor Ohio. I'm KC, and a lot of people when they hunt raccoon, they use dogs. Other people use orange lights. Tonight, we're gonna do something a whole lot different. If you've never hunted coon on the river, you're in for a treat. That's this time on Outdoor Ohio. It was about 8.30 in the evening, the temperatures were in the 30s, and it was kind of humid for a late November, so there was surely a chill in the air. The river was a little low, so we decided to use aluminum canoes instead of fiberglass, because they could withstand a little more abuse. You know, it's bad luck not to name your canoe. I think Fergie. Fergie? It's about seven miles of the Blanche River we're going down tonight. Um, you pretty much cruise along looking for the eyes of the coons. Um, we have pretty good success rate doing this. We see anywhere from 30 to 40, and if we're lucky, we can connect on about half of those. Um, we use a 22. Um, we see, I would say about 50% of them in the water and out of the water. So we just cruise along and see if we can spot them. Our biggest uh, threats are log jams and den trees. Because we can see them up there, but we can't get them. So there's no point of shooting an animal in a den tree you can't, re can't retrieve. We also see a lot of other critters along the way. Uh, beavers, mink, muskrats, coyotes, possums, lots of deer. It's a pretty incredible things you see at night. Most animals don't seem like they're very scared of the light. And we also use a white light because we can see farther. And I haven't noticed in doing this in five years uh, them acting any different from it than a red light. We're in luck. We're only out of the launch for a few minutes and already we see our first pair of eyes on the ground just off the river. You see them? With a flashlight in hand and another on the end of his gun barrel, Andy Jeffers hops out to investigate. Can you get him? That'd be one of them uh, things they call house cat. Oh. A cat? You don't want to. Well, that happens, and our trigger man had the ethics not to shoot a non-game species. Fortunately, the rest of the evening was a lot more interesting. Now, it's one thing to be a trigger man with a 22 while you are solitary on the ground, and it's something else entirely to do it while you're moving in a wobbly canoe. On top of that, when your 22 jams up, and all 22s jam up from time to time, it takes an extra ounce of both skill and patience to get the job done. Although you can do this alone, these long-term friends have found that it works best when your best marksman handles the gun, while the other skillfully captains the canoe. They've also found that waders are a great idea, along with an extra 22, a good solid club, and a light that can vary in intensity. That's kind of a cool coon to get right there. What is it? It's called picture coon. It's all black. See? Look how dark he is compared to the rest of them. I can't really tell, but he is all black. There's probably no rings on his tail. They call those fisher coons. They kind of comes like a fisher. That's pretty neat.
We should work that out easy every single time. Well, we're finally starting to see them in trees. Thankfully, they've been swimming and running on the banks most of the night. Hopefully now they're getting their thing done on the ground, starting to get back up in the trees. So hopefully it'll get a little bit easier from here on out. It's pretty good looking there. I'll get him back down in there and keep going. Must be just about that time they're starting to get back up in the trees. He's down up. Oh, oh, that's a big one. Yeah, he's big. Hey, don't, don't bite me, buddy. Stay over there. Oh. Get you? Yeah, he's not going over. Get him pretty close, 20. The guys bravely toss the raccoons right in the boat with them. But sometimes the coons don't want to cooperate and stay dead. I can't reach down there and get it. How the hell did he come up? about wet coons when I was younger I thought I was really smart I was trying to figure a quick way to get some coons dry so I uh, decided to put uh, three or four frozen coons into my uh, mom's dryer um, after uh, they, they, they thumped around there a couple times I thought they were good I opened it up oh it was just it was a mess there so I wiped it all out got it all clean and everything I thought I got away with this scot-free about a day later my mom went down there and did laundry and did a flint trap just completely packed with coon fur. So don't try to get your coons unfrozen by putting them in a dryer. Lesson learned. After dumping the excess water and reloading their cargo, it was time to get going on the river again. Daniel told me that he had done a little research to make sure everything we were doing is legal. After doing my research from the ODNR and finding out that the water is public right away, but the land underneath of it is not. It's owned by the land, the landlord of the property. So we have to go around, I go around in the summertime and get as much permission as possible from the river. So we are able to get out of the water to get a coon or receive a coon if we do shoot one on someone's property. Most everybody, most of the farmers love it. They think it's funny that we're doing it. Um, plus, 
this way coon honey we're not uh disturbing people with coon dogs running around in the backyards because most people these days don't have that big of vast properties um, of land and uh, a gentleman told me one time that coon dogs don't have watches or no property lines so we don't have to worry about dogs running on different people's property this way and we don't have to worry about trespassing That's the biggest coon all night. Pretty good 18, 19 pounder. I'm just glad they're starting to get up in the trees. Making it a lot easier on them. Hold it here and take out. That's what we like to see. Nice, but just about perfect. The fur buyers now, everybody thinks that they're, it's all about the tail. But 90% of what they're going for is this big, this back fur. He just got a real nice fur on it. Make a good one. Top of the line coon, can't get no better than that. There's typical Andy shooting. He's running. I was trying to catch him. <laughs> it's hard to get these little things when they're running, man. Well, I got him. He was coming out of that tree right there. He's on his way down. They stopped. He hesitated. He hesitated. I slowed him down. He didn't like that too much, did he? No, he's mad. I don't know if I got him in the head yet or not. Yeah. That'll kill him, no? After seven miles and nearly five hours on the river, our tour and our hunt started to wind down. It was a good night. We shot a bunch of coons, and we even reached our goal of a double digit harvest. Well, this is the end of our uh, trip down the river, uh, coon hunting. It's a lot more than just uh, coon hunting. We've seen deer, we've seen flying squirrels, we've seen turkeys, uh, seen a muskrat swim in front of us. We uh, did pretty well tonight. We got 11 coons. If we shot every one we've seen, it'd probably be about 50 coons, but gotta live, leave, let some to see another day. Tips for uh, going down the river coon hunting. Uh, my biggest one is make sure you get permission from landowners before you go trespassing on the property. It's definitely a fun night. Just make sure you have, uh, make sure you got waders on. Make sure you're wearing gloves, make sure everything like that. We flipped the canoe at one time. <laughs> and uh, we, had a, we had a coon as a hood ornament for a while. I'm still cold. <laughs> I'm sure Daniel's still cold. Bryce. Yeah, warm, warm clothes is definitely a, uh, a must. And uh, you gotta have a good paddler. You don't have a good paddler, you're gonna make it down the river. Lots of 22 shells. Oh yeah, you need 22. Lots of them. And a good club. Good club. And good friends.